on Colonial Sports Center. This H.O. Walton's football team and Bernard Clark and the Colonials are up to their worst start in program history. Cameron McCariola sat down with Emma Brown this week to discuss her volleyball journey. And women's soccer concluded their regular season on Wednesday. All that and more on a brand new episode of CSC. That's right, a brand new episode of Colonial Sports Center. My name is Colby Sherman. We promise it's not a treat, trick as we have a treat for you as Cam Wickline joins me today. Cam, what do we have for the people tonight at home? Busy week in Colonial Sports. All four teams were in action. Let's get right to it. Now let's tip the show off with some basketball. Ke or Cam, what went on? It was a busy, it was a busy week. Two college basketball. Sports as both the men's and women's team kicked off their season with a madness event. Our crew was there live to give you the details. Basketball and let's season. Let's meet your RMU men's basketball team. Khalil Spears. John Corbin. And that's four. And there it is. He's going to try is. and give Mackenzie Amalia. And he's in the rhythm. Mackenzie Amalia is in trouble. Khalil Spears was the leading scorer for the Colonials last season with 14.7 points per game. So here we go. Longer first long, 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 long. attempt. I'm Samuel Goldberg for Colonial Sports Center. We had one heck of a crew at Madness. Now we're going to go to a football as they got absolutely rocked by the Campbell Fighting Camels last week. The football team was looking for, to finally pick up a win as they took on North Carolina A&T, the Aggies, which was only met one time prior before this last year. And in their second matchup was at Joe Walton Stadium. So let's take a look and see if the Colonials could finally get a win. We're going to move on, go to the first half here at Joe Walton Stadium. 7-0. Jaden Fowler is going to take the snap. Pump fake throws a beautiful ball downfield to Zachary Leslie. Goes up high, points it, and gets a touchdown. A missed extra point. It was a 32-yard touchdown pass. The Aggies would be scoring a lot here, and Fowler is going to take it. Up a short pass off to Tatoon Bashal. And Cam, I won't lie to you, this was the worst effort I've ever seen all year by the team. You cannot let him walk into the end zone like that. Touchdown, that would make it 23-0, and that is on coaching. Terrible effort by the team there. I mean, I'm not going to disagree with you. It seemed like they just kind of gave up once he got through the middle of the field. Fowler once again throws a ball deep downfield to Sterling Falkholder. He's going to get it. And this is before halftime. Once again, defense becoming a problem at 30 points. We're giving up 30 to nothing Aggies. Unreal how poorly this team has been this year. Moving on to the second half. Anthony Chicken's going to try his best. Throws a short pass. Fakes out the cameraman. Jack is going to run to the end zone. 30 to 7. I mean, I guess putting lipstick on a pig, a little cheesy. It's not show day. Now we get a touchdown there. 30 to 7. We've got now Chicken throws a ball deep down the field to Jamal Hill. He's going to snag that one on fourth and five. You're down a lot of points. You got to try anything. They'll set themselves up. Seven minutes to go. Fourth and goal. Anthony Chicken's going to run the bootleg here. Tries to get there. He's going to run out of gas. Dive for the end zone and touchdown. 33 to 14. Again, lipstick on a pig, but a really nice effort. You might see that on top five plays later, and he held on to the ball, which is really impressive. And, uh, well, you take that positive, you can forget about it. That's a safety. 38-14 final score. Alec Miller is going to talk to Bernard Clark after the shellacking at the hands of the Aggies. One of the biggest things in the first half, we missed a ton of tackles. I mean, number 33 was running wild out there. In the second half, we just made more tackles. We brought our feet with us. We wrapped guys up and brought them to the ground. We had more tackles for loss in the second half. So that was the biggest difference in the second half. All right, thank you for that, Alec. Now let's take a look at the Big South Conference standings. And boy, is it not pretty. We're near 0-7 on the year and 0-3 in conference play. You're going to be in last place. Yeah, I mean, haven't won a game all year. Just the team isn't performing well. You're going to hope they can turn it around eventually, but as of right now, I don't think it's any surprise that they are 0-7. An interesting note, though, all three of their opponents who start conference play are first, second, and third place, so it does get a bit easier. If they are going to turn around the worst star in program history, 
next week probably not the best bet as they're playing Appalachian State, but there's some hope there. Yeah, you would think so. I mean, going up against the FBS opponent next week might be a little tough, but after that, hopefully it eases up a little bit. Now let's take a look at the stats of the worst start in program history. The 2022 Robert Morris Colonials, Bernard Clark's fifth season, you would think there'd be some positives. Their own seven, as we said, worst start in program history. RMU has only had a single one-win season in 2014. Hopefully, at least they can get one this year, and they've been outscored, Cam, 239-70. to 70. Yeah, I mean, with the way this Colonial sports team has been playing, you're going to hope they can get one win this year. I mean, it would almost feel like a win if that does end up being the case and they get their second one-win season ever. Definitely just not going well for the team. Now let's take even more stats. This is more their rankings than FCS and other ones. Yeah, they are third. They are last in the FCS in third down conversions, 104th in pass offense, and 122nd in rush offense. That's second worst. They are worst and second worst in two different major categories. And then just to tee it off at the end, 111th in rush defense. So just nothing going well. On the bright side, they are not last place in every single stat, but that was a more in-depth look at the stats. Now, Alec Miller is going to try and show us any positives we can see on this football team. So, Alec, what do you have for us? This week, the Army Colonials will head down to Boone, North Carolina to take on Appalachian State. I was able to catch up with Coach Clark to see what he looks for in this week's matchup. Anthony Chickett will once again be the starting quarterback for the Colonials. Last week, Chickett went 8 for 18 with 70 yards passing and a passing touchdown. Chickett was also able to rush for a rushing touchdown. I was able to catch up with Coach Clark to see how he keeps his team morale high. Starting the season 0-7 is not ideal, and he gives his guys 24 hours to get over the loss and ponder it, and then he says they have to move on to next week and see if they can go 1-0 next week. Clark says that success is not final, but neither is failure, and he emphasizes that the team needs to be able to move on quickly to focus on next week to be able to go 1-0. The Colonials will focus on being better than they were last week when they take on Appalachian State at 3.30. From Joe Walton Stadium for Colonial Sports Network, I'm Alec Miller. Coming up after the break, we are going to serve you some volleyball highlights. Don't go anywhere. The death of George Floyd, who died in police custody Monday night. Turning my pain into purpose is pretty much what I have done to start this foundation. It's going to take more than just us, you know, as a foundation. It's going to take the community, the world, to help us make a change because it, it just can't be us. the beat of nature at a park or forest near you. Find a forest and music inspired by nature at discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. Now we're going to take a deeper dig, if you will, into the volleyball team as they have, well, not been good this year. They've not won a match since October 7th, and in their last 17 sets, they are 0-17. They're looking to finally get a win as they took on the Green Bay Phoenix. This game was on Saturday. We'll head up to the first set. Colonials were losing this one. Allie Chrisman is going to get set up by Caitlin Brown. She'll get the dig, or the kill, excuse me, and that will make it 14-12. Now, that, that's a good start now. The Phoenix were looking to take away, and Cora Banky was set up by Callie Gentry. She gets the kill, and these two did a lot of work. 24-18 now, and guess what? It's Banky and Gentry. Guess what? Off a player, that goes out. The ball er, and makes it 25-18. First win goes to the Phoenix. Moving on to the second set now. Abby Ryan, she'll get the kill set up by Caitlin Brown. There you go. Nice little over the net, and that will make it. 15-15, Colonials were fine in this one. Uh, Banky, though, gets us set up again. 
by Callie Gentry. Those two did great work together. 18-16, Phoenix looking to take this one, and they did as Alexander Zaku was set up by Callie Gentry. That'll be it, and the Phoenix win 25-22. Their lead bubbles to 2-0 as we move on to the third set. And guess who? It's Zagetsky again. She'll get set up. She'll get the kill. It's 5 0. Phoenix running away with this one. 9 2 now. I don't even need to look at this. Zaginski again. She'll do a kill. That makes it 10 2. Phoenix are running away. 14 5 now. Guess who? Zaginski again with the kill. 15 5 now. The Phoenix easily winning this one. 24 14. Klingels try to fight. Zaginski with the block. Tries to save it. Chrisman does. That'll do it. Phoenix win. 3 0 in the sets, an 18 straight set loss, and I sat down with Danny Gordy. The blocks that they got, we were kind of in a one system or one one option, and, and we, we didn't take care of what we had. A couple of the balls on the backside, we swung into it. Um, they, they're a very, very good team. They're a very good blocking team. They're, they're very dynamic over the net, so uh, it's something that we ran into the first time we played them, and, and we thought we got a little bit better. The Colonials women's volleyball team has been struggling a little bit. We're going to stay at the UPMC Event Center as the Colonials took on the fourth place Panthers of Milwaukee. The Colonials would end up falling by a score of three, to, three sets to nothing. They uh, made, made their record 8-15. and 15. Abby Ryan led the team in both kills and digs. 11 kills, 12 digs. And then freshman Caitlin Brown continues her very good season with 29, 29 assists. Natalie Schmitz led the Panthers with 15 kills. Now that we showed you what the Colonials did this weekend, let's take a look at the Horizon League Volleyball standings. And Cam, it hasn't been the best start to the year, but they still have a shot at this. They definitely still do. I mean, season's not over, so anything can happen. That's right. The Colonials are in last place at 111, but with a great opponent, or a few opponents they could beat, IEPOI and Purdue Fort Wayne, take care of business and win both those games. They have a shot at making the playoffs. It's going to be a lot of work. It won't be easy, but there still is a shot. And 8-16 is a respectable record, I guess. No, it definitely is. That's winning one out of every three games. It, it's better than losing them all. So if they can just win a, la win a couple down the stretch here, they might be able to find their way into the tournament. That's right. Now we're going to go to an ace of an analyst, Michael Deemer. Michael, thank you for joining me tonight. Now, how are you doing tonight? We're going to start out with thoughts on year one under Danny Doherty. I just think it's a little bit surprising. They were projected to finish last in the Horizon League. However, you still have a lot of returners. Emma Brown, Abby Ryan, they've been doing their thing. But Annie, Annie Monaco started the season off pretty well. But she's had a negative hitting percentage the past four games. Definitely, you do not want to see that. I mean, they have, they have been swept the past five games. Nothing, nothing you want to see either. Alina Carmody and Alyssa Hudak, also, also seniors, haven't been what you've been expecting. Yeah, it definitely hasn't been a great year, but the coaching still could, still could be a bright spot on the team. Now, you're talking about Annie Monaco maybe struggling a little bit. What are some areas of improvement the team could take? I definitely think they have to improve in the block department. I mean, they, uh, if you look at the statistics, they're trailing in all statistical categories, but one really jumps out, and it's the block department. They're in the bottom 10% in the entire country, if you put that in perspective, play, they played against Green Bay. They got swept in there. They got outblocked 11 to 2. Green Bay is in the top 15 in the country as well. So if you're going to have a good block department, you have a good team. The Colonials don't. Record shows. Phoenix were having a block party in that game. It was a real problem for the Colonials. But what goal would you set for the team for these last six games of the year? Still, still in the race a little bit. Yeah, you need to have some optimi optimism. You need to finish strong. If you, if you have that sort of set-by-set uh, set and match-by-match uh, philosophy, then that's definitely what you need to see down the last couple of games. And, uh, yeah, they still have a shot in it. They do need to win a lot of them. Well, Michael, thank you so much for joining me in our in-depth look of the volleyball team. Now, Cam Mercario has sat down with Emma Brown to discuss her volleyball journey and what got her here to Moon Township. So, Cam... Take it away. I am here with RMU Volleyball's Emma Brown. And now we're at your junior year. How far do you think you have grown since day one? And then how far have you also thought the team has come since day one? Yeah, I would say I am a very different person than who I was my freshman year. Um, you know, we don't always have the most success in RMU Volleyball, but we always focus on growth. And I think something that the team has 
you know, is pretty evident is that we always are growing. Like every game we are doing something different. We are learning something new and new aspects come out in place. And you are one of the loudest pe people <laughs> on the court. We always see you cheering on the team and always encouraging them. You, you're one of the leaders of the teams. What made you become that person and also what makes that you? Yeah, honestly, I don't know where it comes from. I think I just have, I'm very passionate about the sport. I'm very passionate about my teammates and I genuinely just want the best for them. Like if they're playing good, like I'm hyped up. Like I will hype you up. Like I think that's my main goal. Like no matter if I'm playing good or not, like you can always count on me being loud, <laughs> which I think some of my teammates appreciate. Like it's really cool if someone gets a great kill or a great block, like you gotta celebrate it. You gotta let them know. The coaching change and Coach Doherty taking over, how has that been so far this year and what impact has he left on you? Yeah, well, before he became head coach, um, we were all really hoping he was going to apply for the job. Like, we really wanted him um, to become our head coach because everyone had a great relationship with him. That's something that Danny really focuses on is as you, like me, Emma Brown, the person, not Emma Brown, the volleyball player, which he can switch it on and off, which is great because – you know, you need someone who checks in on your academics, who checks in on your mental health, who checks in on your volleyball playing. And I think that's something that our last coach did lack is, you know, checking up on us as a person. And you guys started off the season with a good start mm -hmm. and conference play has been a little difficult for you guys. Yeah. What are some expectations and goals for the team right now? And what are some expectations and goals for yourself? Yeah, so before the season started, we set some goals for the team. And, you know, we're realistic, like we haven't done well in the Horizon League the past two years, so we made a goal to get sixth in the Horizon League. Currently we're ranked last, but we just finished the first round of playing everyone, so now we're going to go back through the second round. Uh, personally, I just want growth for myself um, on the court. You know, I would like to, you know, increase my gameplay, and I would like to, you know, understand and lead the team a little bit better you know and like motivate them to play their best because I think that is something we're struggling with is consistently playing well so I hope I can you know help relate to the girls and try to understand them a little bit. Thank you Cam for that look into the volleyball team. Now we're going to take another short break so if you guys have to use the bathroom use it now because we have soccer highlights on the other side. If you love them enough to suck the snot out of their nose at 4 a.m., then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Today, we face an unprecedented crisis. Tens of millions of refugees have been forced from their homes. But you can make a difference. Turn disruption and despair to hope and opportunity. Even small amounts make a big difference. Provide shelter, support, or jobs in your community. The more we understand, the greater sense of belonging we create. Act now. Visit supportcrisisrelief.org. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Families don't have to talk about everything, but they should talk about how to plan for an emergency. Get tips and resources to make your family's emergency plan. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. If you still have to go to the bathroom, you're going to have to hold it because it's time for women's soccer as they took on Youngstown State for Senior Day up at the NAC. The women's soccer team ended up taking a loss to Youngstown State. They lost 3-1. to one. Haley Finale scored a goal for the Colonials to give her a team high five on the year. And she was assisted by senior Gabriella Laquona. Kind of been a dynamic duo for the Colonials all year. And for the Penguins, Elias Spalona got a hat trick and ended up being the difference. Now, for a more in-depth look at how the Penguins ended up taking down the Colonials, Kevin Plugstra has a look at that. Kevin, what do you got? Robert Morris women's soccer took to the pitch one last time this season on Wednesday afternoon against Youngstown State. 
It was senior day for the Colonials, and each of the six seniors on the team were honored prior to the game. The weather wasn't ideal, but it didn't hinder the Colonials in the early going. After surviving YSU's early onslaught, which included five corner kicks, RMU settled in and struck first in the 22nd minute, thanks to Haley Finale's fifth goal of the season. That goal was assisted by senior Gabriella Laquona. Head coach Chris Shaw spoke post-game about the team's effort. You know, again, I thought it was a good effort and, you know, played with a lot of intensity and energy and, you know, our seniors, you know, definitely brought it today. But I felt like we weathered the storm and, and, and then kind of got our feet under us and then played, you know, played well from, from that point on in that second or in that first half. The Colonials would hold YSU to no goals until minute 51 when Elise Spindola tied the game at one. Spindola would go on to have a hat trick on the day and Robert Morris was unable to respond late losing 3-1 on senior day. Coach Shaw talked about a few factors that led to the loss. Unfortunately, I think a couple of defensive errors really cost us, especially that second goal, which I think was the kind of straw that broke the camel's back there, you know? And really unfortunate, I think, not to get a goal or two back there in the latter stages of that second half. Despite the loss, the Colonials finished with a 500 record on the season. Shaw spoke with optimism about the future of the program. It's, you know, this is a young group, you know, even though we graduated six seniors, I mean, I, I feel like, I feel like we've got a lot of really young, talented players and, I mean, shoot, we, we subbed in three freshmen today and they made an immediate impact in the game. So I think the future's bright and, you know, we're just going to keep moving forward. For Colonial Sports Network, I'm Kevin Plot. Thank you, Kevin Plotcher, for that in-depth look of the women's soccer team. Now, moving back to the women's soccer team, they were on a three-game losing streak, and they're looking to turn around against Cleveland State. The only problem is the Vikings lead the series 6-0 all-time. Went up to the knack and check it out and see if they could finally win, and they did not. That makes it 7-0 all-time. Vikings win 2-1. Kaylin Romaco had a goal. Liv Finn had five saves. Haley Finale came. What a year. One goal, and Isabella Bowen had three saves. That will drop the Colonials again, 0-7 all-time versus Cleveland State. Now we're going to look an in-depth look at the volleyball, or excuse me, the women's soccer standings in the Horizon League in Cam. It, it, it was an okay year. I mean, it was definitely an okay year. It wasn't what you thought it was going to be whenever the season started mm -hmm. off the way it did. Ended up going 1-7-2 and in conference after going 5-0-2 out of conference. Just not what you were expecting after such a hot start. Not what you were expecting, especially going into co conference play 7-0-4. All seven of their losses this year came in conference, 1-7-2. Definitely a lot to work on, going 500. It's a positive step. They started off best in, in program history, just didn't go their way in conference play. Yeah, they still increased on their win total from last year, so... Just a program you're going to look to keep building. But now we are going to head over to the men's side of things as men's soccer took on Detroit Mercy. They did end up winning two to one with a goal, or two to nothing, my apologies. There was a goal by Hugo Kadima and also a goal by Chase Gilly to give him a team leading four goals. He scored that on a penalty kick and Friedrich Petrelli scored, or recorded a shutout when he had three saves. Briggs and Trelli having a great year. Now let's take a look at the Horizon League men's soccer standings. That the men's soccer team ended up having a little bit better of a year this year, Cam. Yeah, honestly, didn't start out didn't start out as hot like the women's team did, but they they've been very streaky throughout the year. If you want to hear a little bit more about that, listen That's to right. Penalty Kicks podcast. A little shout out, but. Men's team's going to make a final push to make the postseason here. That's right. They got a shot to make the postseason with 10 wins. That put, or 10 points puts them in sixth place. They would qualify, and they did last year, so they're doing good this year, continuing to build towards what they, the ultimate goal is in Horizon League play. Yeah, I, so the men's team, they have a big game coming up against Green Bay. Honestly, if they win, they're probably into the postseason. If they don't win, probably out of it. So it's going to be a very big game. comes up very soon. I believe it's next Saturday. Oh, awesome. Great in-depth look. Now, we're going to head to break again. So as Cam was talking about bathroom breaks, if you need it, take it again, because when we come back, you won't want to miss it. It's the top five plays of the week here on Colonial Sports Center. Want to meet a family with a transgender kid? Here we are. Max loves to do backflips. Max loves to play his ukulele. Max loves to just be a kid and just be himself. When I found out I was pregnant, all I really wanted was a happy, healthy, whole child. And that's what I got. I think it's really important for people to know that trans kids don't have a political agenda. They are just kids. Like any parent, we love our kids unconditionally and we will never stop fighting for them. Stand with us. Protect our families. Wait! Not in the toilet! No, don't do that. No! Don't hit your brother! Oh! Not again! What did I tell you about playing in the mud? Ugh. 
Rafi, not so close to the pool. Wait! Frankie, happy. What are you doing? We told you never to touch the gun! I'm sorry, I didn't think it was that big of a you deal. You could have hurt yourself! Safely store your guns. Unload, lock, and away from ammo. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. Cam, this is the best part of the show. Are you ready? Oh, I, I love this part of the show. It's my favorite part, without a doubt. That's right. So let's take a look at the top five plays of the week in Colonial action. Here we are again, the top five plays. We'll start out with volleyball because you know what? Why not? Up to the UBMC Event Center. Here's the shot. Moving around here. Griffin's try. It's blocked. Alyssa Hudak celebrates, and that'll tie it up at three. Didn't go their way, they got swept, but that was a nice play for the volleyball team. Number four for the top plays. Same game, same place as number five. We're going to stay at the UPMC Event Center as Emma Brown looks for a kill and is blocked by Alexandra Zakuti. Here's another look as she gets up to the top and perfectly times it. Blocked, a massive issue in that game. Same game. Phoenix blocked. Play's going to continue here, a little rally, and it's just going to go boop over the net. And I guess the Colonials try and save it, but that doesn't matter. That makes it. 13 to 4, or 12 to 4, excuse me, Phoenix running away with that one. For your number two play, we hop over to the gridiron in the first quarter between RMU and NCA and T. Jalen Fowler takes a snap, rolls out, gonna look for Bishaw Tootin as he finds him, goes across the middle of the field, down the sideline for the score. 23 to nothing for NCA and T. It was a rough day for the Colonials. That breakaway speed is why you eat your vegetables, kids, because he was able to get down the field on that one. Number one play, Anthony Chicken, and maybe 33 to seven, he doesn't care. Bootleg, running, 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 dives out the goal line, touchdown. It's lipstick on a pig, it's 33-14, it's our top play. Anthony Chicken made a fantastic play at the goal line, held onto the ball. So Cam, what is your, what games do you think people should watch this weekend? I think there's a huge game for soccer this weekend. It is going to be the Colonials versus Green Bay. Just absolutely massive playoff impl implications. I mentioned this earlier. Whoever wins this is probably going to end up making the playoffs. Whoever loses is probably out. My player to watch for RMU is going to be Hugo Kadima. Three goals, scored two of them in the last two games for RMU. And my player to watch for Green Bay is Andrew Pellucci with three goals, two assists, eight points, leads the team in goals and points. Now, Cam, I'm thinking of a different football. It's the football team as they travel to Boone, North Carolina, to take on App State. They have a point or a two tenths of a chance to win this game. It's going to be in Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone, North Carolina. First meeting ever, 330 kickoff. Anthony Chickett has been the best quarterback on the team, 60% completion percentage, almost 400 yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions. Now he has been hurt, so those numbers are a bit misleading. Chase Bryce, 63.9 completion percentage, over near 2,000 yards, 18 touchdowns, and three interceptions. Bryce actually played for the Duke Blue Devils ACC Power Five Conference and started a few years there. It's a, it's a, hopefully the biggest upset in college football history, but it, it's going to be a tough game. Hopefully they can finally win a game. Now, if you want to see more in-depth look at that game in Boone, North Carolina, North Carolina, make sure to check out Colonial Sports Network because we're setting a team down there. Me, Michael Deaver, Ethan Morrison, and Kevin Plaxshaw all will be in North Boone, North Carolina as the Colonials try and take down the Mountaineers in, in a, a big game, Cam. Yeah, it's going to be big. It's going to be a little bit of an uphill battle. You're just kind of hoping for the best with the Colonials. Not really much else you can do. Now, if you are the offense coordinator, what do you do to change, let's face it, almost the worst offense in college football? Honestly, I think Anthony Chickett has been playing pretty well, so I don't know if he's really been the issue. He was hurt, so not really much. You can see very small sample size. I don't think he's the issue, though. The running game just needs to get going. Yeah. I mean, whatever you need to do, if maybe inside runs aren't working, get outside. If outside runs aren't working, get inside. Get involved in the passing lane, in the passing game. Just get play action involved or something. And anything. Every single call the team makes, it almost seems to just backfire. Other than Chickett playing quarterback, I don't think there's been a positive game offensively for this team. Yeah, I don't think you're wrong, but I really want to keep talking about the uh, men's soccer game this year, this week. Men's soccer looking like the only team that's going to make the playoffs out of all the Colonial sports teams. I think it's going to be the biggest game of the year so far. Definitely a big game. Hopefully they can pull that out. 
for that game. But for everybody upstairs, downstairs, Cam McLean, Michael Deemer, I'm Colby Sherwin. Thank you for watching Colonial Sports Center. We will see you.